Right, good morning, everybody. We'll get started. I appreciate there'll be others probably still joining um, in the next minute or two, but it's just gone past um, nine o'clock. Thank you very much for joining this information session um, from Bishop Stroke College on the one year IGCSE program. Um, many of you have um, joined uh, webinars that we've attended before, and we will again do the, the, the usual format. We'll take you through um, some introductions. Um, presentation and then um, time for Q&A at the end. Could I ask please that you um, put yourself on mute um, unless you um, want to ask a question towards the end, just so we don't have any background noise. Um, we will probably be using the chat function for Q&A. Um, my colleague Betty will be managing that. Um, so if you have any questions um, during the course of the presentation, please um, add them to the chat function. Um, we're also recording today's information session, so we will share the uh, recording with you afterwards, which will be um, also uploaded to our YouTube um, channel uh, in case you want to share with any colleagues. Um, and we will also be sharing the materials um, afterwards as well. Um, the session is going to focus on um, the one-year IGCSE programme at Bishop Stroh and how this program is a stepping stone to some of the UK's leading boarding schools. Uh, this is a program we've been running at Bishop Stroh for five years now. Um, we will also talk a little bit up front about the college because I think there's a number of you today that perhaps are uh, less familiar um, with Bishop Stroh and so a little bit of background on, on the college. In terms of, um, in terms of introductions, um, <coughs> I've joined with a number of my colleagues today uh, Betty Dagestan, our Director of Global Engagement, um, who many of you will know, um, who will outline um, the admissions process and, as I said, manage the Q&A later on. Stuart Nicholson, Principal, Chris Lewis, Director of Studies. Uh, and we're delighted that uh, Alenka Bordakova, <coughs> a former Bishop Stroh student who um, was enrolled on the one-year IGCSE programme uh, a number of years ago, has also joined us today. Um, she's currently studying at Durham University. Uh, where, like um, most university students, she's in lockdown, but delighted that Alenka is um, with us here today. So thank you, Alenka, for joining us. <clears throat> I'll start off with a few slides on Bishop Stroh, and then I'll hand over to Chris, um, Stewart, and Betty. Um, Bishop Stroh was established in 2006. Um, uh, it's a fairly unique or very unique um, boarding school in the UK, and that the entire focus of Bishop Stroh is preparing international students for onward progression to um, boarding schools in the UK and in some cases boarding schools in other countries. We enroll students from age seven to 17 and those students follow the British National Curriculum at Key Stage two, three and four. Um, they're typically with us for up to a year, no more than a year before they progress on to their destination school. We're a school, small school, we have up to um, 90 students, um, typically from around 30 different nationalities and because of the nature of our provision, <coughs> focusing on preparation for boarding, academic English progression, all of the students are international. And the college is situated on an eight acre site on the edge of um, Warminster, <coughs> which is a market town in Wiltshire, sandwiched between um, Salisbury and Bath. So a very rural setting um, and this time of COVID, a very safe setting. There are some aspects of Bishop Stroh that are quite unique. Um, we run the college just like a boarding school, um, deliberately so because we're preparing our international students for a boarding school experience, but we have a four-term academic year. I think we're the only school in the country to have a four-term academic year with staff, boarding and academic staff um, working for 44 weeks of the year. So it's, uh, there's no changeover in the summer. It's the same team uh, delivering the same program. Um, we similarly don't have any half terms or exit weekends, so um, we're very much uh, an, an, an all, all year round um, provider with students joining um, throughout the year. We have rolling enrolments um, with entry points in September, January, March, June and July, and students are with us for as little as five weeks. Those that are on our five week academic summer program up to um, up to a year, depending on uh, their circumstances. The college is independent and that's important because we're a stepping stone to um, really any boarding school in the UK and our students routinely go on to 100 different boarding schools each year. Um, it's also important because we work closely um, with many other boarding schools. We have teaching partnerships with 
a hundred other schools in the UK, whereby students coming to Bishop's Row to attend a pre-sessional course can be sponsored in terms of their student visa, their student child visa, what was previously known as the tier, tier four visa by the destination school. And because schools recognize that our provision is unique uh, and very different to what a mainstream boarding school will offer, um, many boarding schools are very happy to refer students to Bishop's Row to attend a pre-sessional course before enrolling with them. And those referrals um, either come directly from the schools or through the agents that the schools are working with. But that um, really does set Bishop's Row aside from most other boarding schools. Um, the students are very much focused on their uh, English language and academic progression across core subjects. Um, uh, but we have a cohort every year, obviously, based on today's conversation, who sit the IGCSE examinations. Typically, the students that are with us in the equivalent of year 11 before progressing on to um, uh, sixth form. And because those students um, are all students with English as a second language, uh, they always um, uh, perform very well and we're delighted with um, recent results and, uh, and previous results. In addition to the one year IGCSE programme, um, we offer a number of other programmes given that we are enrolling students from age 7 to 11. And we routinely sort of divide the school into three main cohorts, junior students, junior college students who are aged 7 to 11, these are students that will follow key stage two and in most cases progress on to a prep school or year seven in a senior school. Middle college program, middle students aged 11 to 14 following key stage three. We have a pre-IGCSE um, and an IGCSE program where students can join at any time during the year. Uh, they won't necessarily um, do IGCSE examinations, but they will cover the IGCSE curriculum before progressing on to uh, their destination school the one-year IGCSE programme and a five-week academic summer programme which covers all um, cohorts, so juniors, middles and seniors. Um, all of the class sizes are very small, so maximum of eight in a class for English and 12 for subjects, and that's very much um, to ensure we can provide the best support um, possible for the students and to ensure they make as much progress as rapidly as possible. And in addition to the English language and other core subjects that they study, such as maths, science, geography, history. Um, they also uh, are involved actively on a daily basis with sports, extracurricular activities, um, and um, an active weekend program, which includes um, weekly testing on a Saturday morning. Destination schools, this is just a snapshot from the last academic year, 2019-20. In a normal year, we would typically have about 175 students uh, enrolled through Bishop Stroh. Um, that's obviously more than our capacity, but that reflects the fact that um, we have students that are with us for up to a year, but in many cases are with us for a shorter period. The majority of students are what we call um, seniors, so 60 of our 90-odd students will be seniors, key stage four, and that's reflected in the, um, the long list of senior schools there versus the shorter list of prep schools. Um, we are a non-selective school with the exception of our one-year IGCSE programme. So we have students joining us with a range of abilities, a range of English language levels, um, uh, and then progressing on, as you can see there, to a range of schools. The choice of schools is very much driven by the uh, advice that the agents are providing to the families. So Bishop Joe has very little influence here, although from time to time we will be asked to provide our perspectives on um, suitable schools for our students. And that obviously applies for those students on the one year IGCSE program. I'm gonna hand over to Chris there, who will take you through um, sort of the academic components of the one year IGCSE program. Um, and then in turn, Stuart. Okay, um, thank you. Um, hi everyone. Uh, so I'll just go briefly over um, this one year IGCSE program so you know uh, what we're covering. Um, so students study a range of subjects. I'll go into detail shortly, uh, but these will lead to between six and eight IGCSE qualifications. Uh, six would be the minimum we would expect our students to achieve. More able mathematicians could take uh, the IGCSE additional maths qualification and some students whose first language is one of the examinable subjects under the Cambridge exam board will also have the opportunity to take an eighth qualification in this subject. 
Uh, now, the program has been designed over a number of years to prepare international students for success in the IGCSEs in just one year. Um, and this one year time frame begins in June with our term four. Uh, Bishop Stroke College offers uh, an academic summer program uh, following the same structure as our terms one, two and three, uh, which means our IGCSE students have a full term familiarizing themselves with the subjects that they'll be studying, getting used to the style of teaching at Bishopstro and across the UK, and developing the kinds of skills that students will be assessed in at IGCSE level. Um, so this is a very important part of the learning process that we've identified as a key factor of student success. And also the timing of this is very pertinent because students will gain fantastic support in preparing for the destination schools uh, during this time. And um, Stuart will be giving you more details on how we do this shortly. Okay, um, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so this is the course in a little more detail. Um, students will study in the classroom for 30 hours per week, um, and that's supported by seven and a half hours of supervised prep um, across each of the listed subjects there. And that's per week, 30 hours in the class, seven and a half hours of prep. So it's 37 and a half hours, sorry, just dropped my mouse, 37 and a half hours altogether. Okay, um, so um, let's have a look at the subjects. We've got languages there and students will study either English as a second language or English as a first language. Um, uh, during the application and interview stages, we'll be making judgments on the suitability of each candidate uh, for these two courses, and we'll be able to make a decision which one would be the best pathway to follow for each individual student. Also, as discussed before, some students whose first language is one of the examinable subjects under the Cambridge Exam Board will also have the opportunity to take an IGC, ex uh, IGC ex exam in their language, in their first language. Um, mathematics, in mathematics, we expect all students to be able to sit um, the IGCSE mathematics exam at the end of the year. However, more able mathematicians will also be able to take the additional mathematics IGCSE as well. And again, this will be considered during the application process, but also during the students' first few weeks at Bishop Stroke College. So we are going to be able to see how they react to the mathematics syllabus. Um, sciences. In science, we expect all of our students to be able to study towards and sit the double IGCSE um, in science, and that's leading to two IGCSE grades. Um, and it covers chemistry, physics, and biology, allowing students to progress to these subjects at A level. And in humanities, um, we will prepare and expect all of our students to sit the history and business studies IGCSE. Um, there are other um, non-examined subjects as well. So in order to support students' understanding of international culture, uh, which is very pertinent to them in the world they're entering, uh, we teach our version of the Global Perspectives IGCSE syllabus. Now, this does not lead to a qualification, but um, we have enhanced this subject to deliver a program of academic study skills, ensuring students have time to develop and practice skills such as thesis, essay writing, discursive styles of writing, academic research, presentation skills, all of these things assist them in their preparation for other IGCSE subjects, but also in their future academic career. Um, uh, also, as part of uh, subject uh, support designed for international students, we also deliver our own subject support syllabus uh, which enables students to develop an understanding of English for academic purposes within the context of the subjects that they're studying on the course. So this is a very effective element of our program in supporting students when they're transitioning from their country's education into the British education system uh, and the language and the skills that they'll need to do that. Uh, finally, in order to support their personal, social and health education in line with the requirements of uh, the UK Department for Education, we deliver a PSHE program through our whole college assemblies um, that they have every day and during tutor time uh, with their students, with the student's English teacher, and that happens for an hour every week. Um, so in addition to class time and prep, um, we also assess students on a weekly basis. Um, so this is usually on Saturday mornings. Now, initially, this will be in English language in order to ensure students have uh, the fundamental skills in order to develop their knowledge across all subjects. But as the course continues, 
And this becomes a much more bespoke element of the program with teachers identifying other subject areas requiring additional support for individual students and using this time to test and adjust as necessary across all of our subjects. Now, these assessment results, along with detailed comments on engagement, on progress and targets for improvement in every subject we've just talked about, are all included in an individual learning plan that we will share with the student, with the agents, with the parents um, in the first two weeks of the course. And then at half term and at end of term points thereafter. Um, so this includes uh, a detailed report on how they're doing in their subjects, how their progress is being made and how they are performing in sport and in boarding as well, because that's also a very important part of life at Bishop Stroke College. Now, students will have an hour long tutorial um, as a group with their English teacher on a weekly basis um, to cover part of the PSHE, uh, PSHE syllabus, but also to discuss academic progress and targets for improvement. And also in addition to class time, students will also be given tuition and preparation in entrance examinations uh, for their destination school and one-to-one -one practice school interviews with our principal, Mr. Nicholson. Now, all of this teaching is done, um, as Mark said, in very, very small classes. So we have a maximum of 12 students for this group, which means um, our teachers can give a very personalized <coughs> form of education, knowing exactly uh, what students can do and sometimes more importantly, what they can't do. And so they can adapt and personalize teaching and prep to respond to the individual um, and help them to ensure the best environment for excellent progress and ultimately success in their IGCSEs and their route to their destination school. Um, but it's not all about the classroom. Bishop Stroke College has been working with international students for a long time. Um, and our boarding program is designed to work hand in hand with the academic program in supporting students becoming acclimatized to British culture and build and develop on the skills needed for a very smooth and successful transition <coughs> to their destination school. So Stuart's gonna talk in more detail about that later. Um, he'll mention sports and activities and trips that students do outside of the classroom. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Uh, so this is a typical timetable. Uh, just to give you an idea of how we spread out the day. Um, so it covers the, the six hours of lessons uh, spread out nicely with breaks and lunch. Uh, we've got the additional 90 minutes. That's one and a half hours for prep um, every day and the Saturday assessments as well on top of that, as well as activities, clubs and excursions uh, that Stuart uh, will take you through later. Um, but I think that gives you an overview of what the one year IGCSE course is. Um, how it's designed for international students specifically, and how our knowledge of supporting the needs of international students have gone into the design and, and delivery of this course. Um, I think, um, Stuart, you're next up um, talking about the, um, the process onto their um, target schools. Yes, thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, Mark. As Chris indicated, I'm going to give you some um, introduction into the process for um, getting students actually into the destination schools. The whole focus of this one year IGCSE programme is not Bishop Stroh as an end in itself, but Bishop Stroh as the stepping stone on to somewhere else. And if we start um, at the top right hand corner, if you look at the inner circle, that says term four, and the um, circles to the outside of that, June, July and August. Our term four takes place throughout the summer. And as both Mark and Chris have indicated, this isn't a summer holiday course. This is the school. We run in just the same way during June, July and August as we do during September, October, November and so on. We have the same staff, we run the same structures. It is definitely coming to school. It's having normal lessons. It's getting that academic input. It's getting all the value that Bishop Stowe offers during the times that people would consider normal um, academic year um, added um, into the Bishop Stowe term four. And the advantage for our one year IGCSE students, which will be highlighted even further actually on the next slide, 
if you look at the top right hand corner, um, we're then looking already at what the destination school and A level subjects might be. So we're helping them find out a bit more about schools and we'll be helping them to go and actually visit the schools that they're interested in. We may be able to take some of them in groups if there are schools that a number of them are interested in uh, or otherwise we'll be helping them to, to get to see those um, perhaps independently. But we're making sure that they're very well informed and uh, starting at this stage is very important as we'll see later because the time scale is really tight. So that progress um, process is taking place throughout June, July and August. Uh, we'll be helping them think not just about the schools, but the entrance exams and the interviews. And we'll be helping them prepare for all of those. And as August moves into September, as we go around that wheel from term four into terms one to three of the more customary academic year, that's when we're actually already having to start making those applications. As I say, the deadline is tight. Um, they need to be well informed. They need absolutely to hit the ground running. And that's what the term four provision is doing for them. It means that they're not arriving in September and finding that they just don't have enough time to address what needs to be addressed. Because you'll see as we continue around that wheel, by the time you're getting to October, already the process has started of entrance exams and interviews at these competitive destination schools. That starts as early as um, September, October, but you'll see as we go around the wheel further through November and December, um, that process, depending upon which school it is, and we've got um, some information to share on the next slide, um, the um, interview processes take place uh, mainly throughout that um, term one, but you'll see that there are still some taking place in the spring term, um, depending very much on, on the individual school but we really do have to get them well prepared. So that term for process where they're with us, um, and Chris was explaining some of the things that teachers are available to do with them, um, makes such a difference in them being successful in that tight time scale um, for the destination school um, processes. And of course then, um, as we move around to the um, final part of, of that circle, that's them heading off towards those IGCSE examinations. They'll have done the research on schools, they'll have done the applications, they'll have done the interviews, they'll have done the tests, they'll have got their offers, and then it's all the ongoing advantages that they've already had um, within the classroom, making the best of um, that high ability to get the um, very high grades that these schools are likely to be expecting from them. Thank you, Mark, could I have the next slide, please? So here we've just given some illustration of the sort of timeline that you need to work to for some of these schools. So if we take the top one there at Brighton College, uh, only the top because alphabetically it comes first. We're not trying to indicate that this is the Bishop Stowe League table. Um, you see that they've got to register by early September. So you can see that if students are arriving for a typical um, school year coming in September, really they're already too late for making informed, intelligent applications to a number of these schools. And I'm trying to apply to Brighton, actually, you're really too late. And you can see that following on from that early registration and application process, their assessments and interviews are taking place in September and October and making the offers during that first term. And if you look at all the schools on that list, you can see that it is happening very early. Decisions need to be made by October. And down at the bottom, St. Mary's in Ascot, you'll see actually you need to have been thinking about it a very long time in advance. But typically, we're looking at decisions needing to have been made in September, October. So you can see why it is really important to take advantage of the Bishop Stroh Term 4 opportunity in this one year program to do all of that advanced thinking, understanding um, where you're applying, why you're applying there uh, and what's going to be important. And then we can help students be best prepared. Uh, if the assessments and interviews are taking place in September, October, November, then we're able to do that preparation properly because we've understood um, where students are applying and we're able to help them in the most appropriate way. 
Thank you, Mark. Could we have the next slide, please? Here is a little bit more detail of that um, early period, the term four um, running from June to August and the early stages of term one. So the first um, process is the um, selection of the school and thinking about which subjects they might want to be applying for at those schools. And what we'll be doing at Bishopstro is working with you and with parents to double check that we've got the right plans. Um, we expect that um, a lot of thinking will already have been done, but it'll be making sure that we understand that properly and confirming where the um, destination targets are. We'll be making sure that everybody understands the process that the um, students have to go through and what the timeline is so that nobody is feeling that they're rushed and not able to give their best because they, they feel as though they haven't time. And I know that um, a lot of people on this call are themselves very expert and able to provide an awful lot of advice and guidance to students, but we too are very happy to do that. And we're very um, keen to work with you in making sure that the students are best prepared, best advised. And that includes their A-level subject choices as well as the schools. Obviously we'll be getting some more detailed knowledge of students ability in specific subjects because we've got them with us in the classroom every day. And whilst agents are very well informed by uh, talking to parents and understanding school reports and so on, uh, it, it's quite likely that you'll think that our insight into um, how we see them day in day out in the class might um, helpfully influence those A-level subject choices. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll be making sure that students get to go to see some of these destination schools so that they have a, a clear understanding of the nature of these, um, these organizations. We all like to think that our schools are, are very individual, so it's important for them to understand by actually seeing some of these schools that the, the, the schools do have a different character and so that they're feeling confident that they've made the right choices. And that's being led by me, um, working with the resident tutors in particular, who are able to um, spend time discussing uh, with the students some of the aspects of, of what influences the right sort of choices of school. Then we work with those schools. Um, we have direct contact with them to make sure that uh, we understand exactly what the selection processes are going to be, what the time, uh, what the detailed timelines will be, the dates of exams, the dates of tests, the dates of interviews. And we liaise directly with the schools to make sure that those um, run in a very um, organized, seamless way for the student. We make sure that they're well prepared. We have a very substantial bank of practice tests and we help them also write their personal statements, which are a requirement for, for many of the schools. We give them practice interviews and make sure they understand about how to um, respond well in interview. Um, I do the majority of that. Um, I get help from my colleague, uh, Greg, the Assistant Director of Studies and from Kate, our learning coordinator. And uh, they are making sure that the practical contact with the, the schools runs uh, very smoothly. They're very experienced and very expert at that. And it's one of the things that helps give students great confidence as they go into these um, you know, sometimes quite high pressure um, assessment and interview situations. And the final stage of that is that schools will be asking me to provide a confidential reference on the students. Um, these are all bespoke individual, um, carefully written references, and I get input from all my colleagues, but those come directly from me. So I think I'm now handing on to uh, Mark to, and to Alenka, who will talk a bit about the experience of some of the students who've already been through the Bishop Stroh one year GCSE and made their way to some of these high quality schools. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Stuart. Um, <clears throat> before we um, introduce Alenka, I just wanted to share some feedback from some of the students that have been on the one year IGCSE program um, previously in the past. Um, from a range of different countries are so coming to Bishop Stroh um, from a range of different education systems, backgrounds, abilities. Uh, but Tom from Vietnam, who progressed on to St. Edward's School, Oxford. Um, 
uh, you know, his uh, feedback there highlights not only um, the support in terms of improving his subject grades in order to gain entry to a school like St Edwards, but also, um, you know, getting him familiar with the British education system, which is very different from his uh, schooling in Vietnam. Lisa from Russia was actually with us for uh, more than a year. She spent uh, two or three terms initially focused on um, progressing her English on our senior college programme and then uh, progressed on to the one year IGCSE programme once her English was at the required level um, with um, the King's School Canterbury, very much uh, the target destination school. We work very closely with her agent um, uh, to uh, support her in that journey. Um, and uh, I think she was delighted to progress on to, um, to Canterbury. Alan from Romania was very keen to study the IB, uh, which is one of the reasons why he chose Bromsgrove School, um, which is an IB school. Um, he came to us um, uh, again uh, slightly ahead of uh, September, um, so he could initially focus on his English, um, but again with a specific destination in mind, in this case Bromsgrove, and I think he's now progressed through Bromsgrove and is currently at university. But three examples of students that have been through the program um, and where we have helped them through uh, their time at Bishop's Row, make that transition and gain entry to uh, a school that probably would have been difficult for them to um, enter directly um, from home. Just wanted to um, introduce uh, Alenka's uh, journey before I ask Alenka two or three questions. Alenka joined us um, in the summer of 2016, uh, term four. Um, she didn't have an agent. Uh, we worked very closely with her guardians who were um, based in Winchester and her guardians supported Alenka um, through her education, not just at uh, Bishop Strobe and beyond. But in this instance, uh, we work very closely with her guardians to identify uh, schools for Alenka to apply to. Um, the target in this instance was girls' schools within a 90 minutes drive from Winchester, where her guardians were, were located. Um, so we identified a number of schools um, and um, shared information on entry procedures, entry requirements. Um, Alenka applied to a number of schools and progressed on to Cheltenham Ladies College for her A-levels, having completed the one-year IGCSE programme at uh, Bishop's Row. She did exceptionally well at Bishop's Row and was um, uh, won the Principal's Award at the end of the year with us. And she's currently in the second year of her um, undergraduate degree at Durham, uh, where she's studying international relations. Um, I've stayed in touch with Alenka over the years and she's been uh, quite active on social media. Um, and uh, delighted that she's with us today. So hopefully, Elenka, you can um, put your camera on if your camera's not on. Um, I, I asked Elenka to, to give some consideration to a number of questions just to um, hopefully give you some perspectives on us on you know, how she embarked upon her journey and the one-year IGCC programme at uh, Bishop's Row. So the first question, Elenka, is uh, you obviously had a good level of English and maths prior to leaving Ukraine. You had attended a number of summer schools in the UK um, before joining Bishop's Row. What was your motivation to enrol at Bishop's Row for the one-year program? Well, thank you for this introduction, by the way. Um, yeah, um, my English was quite good at the time. Um, and I did go to a few um, summer schools before I actually joined Bishop's Row. But I think both my guardians and I had a realization that it was borderline impossible for me get, to get into a boarding school in the UK without any prior experience of actual education in the UK. So that's how we found Bishop's Show. We were actually uh, referred, from, um, referred to you by the Godolphin School. And it was the best choice that we'd ever made because I remember going to the, I think it was a school's fair in Kiev, which is the capital of Ukraine. And I met you and I asked you lots of questions about what Bishop's Show was like and what they were doing. And um, I realized that it was actually the one place that would help, help me to get into a boarding school here in the UK, which you did in the end. So you mentioned there <coughs> Godolphin. I think you'd approached Godolphin um, before enrolling at Bishop's Row. Which other schools did you apply to for sixth form? Um, there was Waldingham, there was Green Anne's and Cheltenham Ladies College. I think there were a couple more, but I can't remember the names of them. But honestly, I think I only remember doing entrance exams and entries with two of them, 
and that was enough for me to actually get to offers. <laughs> and um, you then progressed on to um, to Chatham Ladies College, but if you cast your mind back to the um, the support that Bishop Stroh gave you outside the classroom, the support in terms of going through the interview process and applying to these potential destination schools. Can you share a little bit in terms of you know what sort of support, what sort of help you were provided with? Yeah, of course. So alongside the very intensive IGCC program, um, Bishop Stroh were actually doing a lot of background work to help me find the best school that would make a really great choice for me. And I never personally believed that I could end up at one of the best schools in England, uh, but I realized how much Bishop Stroh put in, um, how much effort they put in into um, me getting there. And one of the things that I remember very well, um, actually two things, is the practice tests, the interest tests that um, I got to practice, but also which, what I found much more important was the mock interviews with the principal. I remember going into the office and being asked all these strange questions. And that what really gave me the confidence to actually feel comfortable in an interview with my next school that I actually proceeded to. And I think, um, what it did is actually uh, firstly gave the confidence, but also allowed me to make a really good impression on the school because all those strange questions I've been asked in that interview, I can tell you right now. And in terms of the practice test, that was also very useful because I obviously had never done anything like that before. And I didn't know um, what, the, what any of the entrance tests would be like. So um, getting a perspective on what they'd be like in real life and what I have to do was really useful. Um, thank you. And my final question, Alenka, and I'm sure there might be some questions at the end from um, those uh, joining us today. You then progressed on to Cheltenham Ladies College. Just share some perspectives from your two years at Cheltenham. I'm sure it was a fantastic time for you, uh, but what were the highlights from Cheltenham and how did your time at Bishop Stroh help you integrate into um, Cheltenham Ladies College, which was clearly a very different environment to, to Bishop Stroh. So um, I think you have you've um, asked this question that makes me think of my first day actually at Cheltenham Ladies College. And I remember being sat in this classroom full of girls, Cheltenham Ladies College is a girls school obviously, and I never imagined myself um, going to a girls school. So um, what really made me feel like Bishop Stroh really prepared me for my time there is me feeling comfortable in that classroom amongst all these girls that are um, that come from the UK or have been in that school for most of their lives to whom everything they were doing was regular and English was their first language and that comfort that I received from being amongst them um, communicating with teachers asking them questions uh, answering questions that what me made me feel like Bishop Stroh really did a great job. Um, another aspect of this was also the cultural factor. Factor, so it's it's not just the academics that help you fit in into the school, but also knowing the culture, what it's like um, living in the UK, and obviously outside of the um, program, we did lots of trips around England, even to Scotland. Sorry, not Scotland, Wales. That was. <laughs> Um, and that really helped. And the PE program as well um, introduced me to lots of different um, sports um, activities that English girls grew up with. And um, yeah, I really, I really um, fit in in terms of I was, the fact that I was able to socialize and just know lots of stuff that people know normally anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alenka. Um, appreciate those thoughts. We will probably come back to you um, in a few minutes when we have Q&A because I'm sure some of the audience will like to maybe ask you a, a few more questions. Sure, Just thank, to move, you. thank you. Thank you, Just to move on, Stuart will now take you through a few more aspects of our provision at Bishop Stroh outside um, the classroom, which uh, form an important part of our programmes. Um, uh, so Stuart, back to you, please. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Alenka, because I think uh, it was really helpful that you highlighted that it wasn't just what happened in the classroom that meant that you had a very um, successful start at Cheltenham Ladies and that meant you were able to enjoy um, your education here um, as, as well as 
um, you know, just, just feel as though it was you know, successful in the classroom. And it is a very wide extracurricular program and we're very um, committed to doing this thoroughly and well. And so there's a very wide range of sports and activities that take place actually throughout the day. And they're um, things that enable students to get to know one another well, and that's obviously really helpful um, just in terms of their um, happiness within Bishopstrow. But it also helps them understand so much about um, what we're preparing them for, the schools that they're moving on to. So uh, sports, um, they're important. And if you just look at the list there, as Alenka said, you know, it's covering some things that would be completely familiar to students who were born and brought up in the UK, but potentially very unfamiliar for people who haven't had that background. So we teach um, all boys and girls to understand that when you're playing netball, you're not allowed to move with the ball. Now, my goodness, what's this crazy game where you give, they give you the ball and then you have to, have to stand still. <laughs> And uh, other crazy games, you know, boys and girls also introduced to rugby, equally crazy. They allow you to run with the ball, but then you're not allowed to pass it forward. So we make sure that our students understand these things that are part of the, the cultural background. And it all helps that when they get to their um, destination school, they feel as though they fit in. And that makes the whole process easier and happier for them. So a wide range of clubs, we've mentioned some of them there, uh, chess club, drama, literature. And we use all of those extracurricular um, activities to run a house system because pretty much every boarding school in the UK will have a house system. And um, even if students are with us a very short time, we want them to get to understand that, how that works, to enjoy that participation, uh, to enjoy that competition and to enjoy sharing things with their peers. Um, I shouldn't, however, give the impression that the extracurricular program um, sits separately and just alongside what we're doing in the classroom. Um, we're rather more um, subtle in the way that we use it. We're always trying to find ways of linking what students are doing on the extracurricular program with things that we want them to learn more generally. So those will be giving them opportunities for practicing their English. We'll be using those extracurricular activities to align with particular aspects of um, subjects that they might be studying. So if we take them to the Roman baths, well, the Roman baths um, can be approached from a science point of view. What is it that leads to that hot, hot water? Um, you can look at the physics of that. You can look at the chemistry of the water, um, as well as looking at the history of, obviously, you know, it's, it's Roman origins. So we're trying to use that in a subtle, um, supportive way for everything that they're doing academically inside the classroom as well. So it is a very holistic 24-7 um, all term round process of helping that broadest uh, type of education. Most of it on site at Bishopstow, of course, but as Alenka also mentioned, um, some of those trips at weekends where we're weaving in some more of those educational experiences, cultural experiences, and we hope lots of fun too. Could I have the next slide, please, Mark. The welfare of our students is absolutely pivotal. And we take these things uh, very seriously indeed. It's all very much supported by the very helpful staffing ratios that we have at Bishopstrow. Not only do we have very good staff, but we have plenty of them. Um, in the classroom, as Chris mentioned earlier, the maximum class size of 12 students per class. So our students are really well known by their teachers, but there is um, equal provision when they're outside class. The boarding staff are again very numerous and so that means that the students always have somebody that they can turn to and they're people who have time to spend time with them. The staff are well trained, uh, all fully first aid trained, we have all the necessary uh, medical contacts with the local GP um, and all of that works supportively and well. Our older students that we're really focusing on here with the one year GCSE um, session that we're talking about today, they live in shared rooms of two, three or four, and they have access to their own small kitchen and sitting room facilities. So it makes them, uh, gives them that uh, a little bit more independence and a little bit more grown up um, than our seven year olds, for example. 
Uh, there are plenty of recreational facilities, both indoor and outdoor. Um, thankfully, we have the lovely grounds at Bishop Stowe, which have been a real blessing in the time of lockdown. Um, our students actually have really loved doing all the things that we've been able to do on site. So plenty of recreation facilities, good common room spaces, um, a really good um, teaching building, and the all important these days, good Wi-Fi. The catering is really good. That's one of the nice things that students say at Bishop Stowe. Um, over the years, generally, it's quite difficult to find uh, a catering provision where all the students say that they love the food, but we do a really good job at Bishopstow. They, they get rave reviews from our students, so you know, very much well done to our caterers. Mark, I think I'm now passing on to um, Betty for information about the entry processes. That's right. Thank you, Stuart. Um, Thank you, Stuart. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Well, um, I'd like to think this is the most interesting part of the uh, presentation, but I don't think I can top uh, Elenka's uh, experience uh, that she has shared with us. Um, so just moving on to the entry requirements. Um, so students would need to be 15 or 16 um, on entry for the one year programme. It is an intensive programme, so we need to make sure that we are aligned with the rest of the country um, as well in delivering the IGCSE course. The minimum level of English is B2, which is a, a high IELTS 5.5 score. We also have a password um, maths entrance test, which will be at the GCSE level, and students will need to achieve 90% um, in that test in order for them to be considered for the program. So that's the standard entry requirements. What we would also like to see, what would be um, helpful as well, is if a student could also present a personal statement as well during the um, application process. And as most of you um, know, or some of you are new, the application process runs uh, quite smoothly. So we will need a completed application form, which is online. Um, we would need the student's school report uh, from their current school, a character reference as well from their head teacher, teacher or their tutor. Um, and as I said, a personal statement as well. Um, when we have received those documents, uh, we will then proceed with an interview, which will be carried out by Stuart or Chris, uh, who, are, who are both on the call today as well. So we would ask that obviously everybody here today is an agent, that our um, tests are invigilated and monitored as well in agent offices, and we will provide you with all of the instructions to administer the test. Um, we would imagine that we have a, a smooth sort of turnaround on this. As long as we have all of the uh, documents in place, then we should sort of be able to, to give a decision quite quickly on those. The term dates, as Stuart um, has mentioned, Chris has mentioned, we would like students to be here in June, and that's the term four in a normal calendar, um, where, and then we will also kind of consider if you do have students that, that can't make it in June that need to start in July, um, but ideally we would like them here as soon as possible. The fees um, are 13,250 per term, um, and that includes pretty much everything, um, including the school visits, the accommodation, ex the excursions and activities. And in order for the student to be registered, we would require a registration fee and a deposit as well. Um, and we will send you the presentation after this and you are more than welcome to um, email us if you do have any particular cases or if you would like to, to move forward with any application. Okay. Thank you, Betty. Thank uh, you. We wanted to finish before we go into Q&A with just an update on the situation at Bishop Joe with COVID-19. And so I'm going to hand back to Stuart just to provide an update on um, the state of play at Bishop Joe uh, currently, given obviously the ongoing uh, pandemic situation. Yes, thank you, Mark. Obviously, this has been the background to all our lives over the last year. And in the world of British boarding schools, um, it, it's been a very significant factor. And we adopted the Boarding Schools Association COVID Safe Charter when it was brought out. And we also adhere to the Safe Schools uh, Initiative in the UK. And in fact, we've um, really done rather more than um, all of these um, suggest or require. We've been very thorough and very cautious in our approach really throughout. 
And um, as a second bullet point says, we've actually had no cases of COVID-19 among staff or students at Bishop Stroke. Um, I hardly dare say that, um, <clears throat> given that you know, almost no school has, uh, is now able to say that. And I hope I'm not tempting fate by, <laughs> by us having that on a slide today, but we've been super cautious, super careful. And at least so far, we've been rewarded by having uh, no cases at all. We reopened earlier this year on the 4th of January and had the majority of students on campus. They had joined us before the UK went into lockdown and they are with us still. And many of them are being able to enjoy quite a lot of face-to-face -face lessons. Um, we have a, a mixture of face-to-face -face and online, but we are um, supremely fortunate that because we are a small, entirely self-contained a boarding school with staff who live on site, teachers who are on site and part of that resident boarding bubble are you know, within the household and they are teaching students face to face. We're still able to maintain a full program of all those extracurricular things. Obviously there are um, some things that we're restricted from doing, but we are um, still um, fulfilling everything that we want to do in terms of giving students a wide experience, all of those things that we think, you know, carry additional value. And there's no doubt that the program that we've got this year is proving every bit as popular as the ones that we've had before. As I said, we are um, super careful. Um, Non-resident staff from the outset um, have been um, very careful. We've uh, even had things like we adopted some of the care home principles and staff who come in from being off-site, those who come in each day, they get changed when they arrive. Um, and so we're being really beyond um, what most um, organizations are doing in terms of trying to achieve very good infection control. The NHS set up its um, testing scheme for schools um, a few weeks ago. Actually, we have been testing since well before that. As soon as it became possible to get the rapid tests we actually went out and got our own. So we, uh, again, were ahead of the game and it felt like a, a really significant addition to our um, infection control and care processes to be able to do those frequent tests. But now they're doing, uh, we're doing tests actually twice weekly um, through that NHS scheme. And we're waiting to hear it from the prime minister on Monday, but uh, all the indications are that schools in the UK will be reopening on the 8th of March. So we are excited and looking forward to that. And we're very much uh, looking forward to having everybody back as soon as we can um, in person at Bishop Stroke. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Stuart. Um, that brings us to the end of the formal presentation. And I think um, I'm gonna hand over or back to Betty to um, I think manage the, the Q&A side. Um, I think there's quite a lot of questions in the chat on, on um, Q&A. So Betty, are you happy to sort of walk yes. people through the questions and we will respond obviously accordingly. Perfect, okay, good. So um, first question is regarding the school selection. Um, and I'm, I'll interpret it as um, how Bishop Stro provides the sort of independent advice um, to two prospective students and how we are aligned with agents on this. So how does the process work? Where does the agent fit into, into this process? Yeah, okay, yeah, thanks Betty. It's probably best if I take that one. Mm -hmm. um, the, the agent input is key. Um, it's, um, you know, it, it's one of the things that really gladdens my heart when an agent comes with a student and says, you know, this is what we're thinking about in terms of the plan for where they might go. Um, you know, that type of um, um, uh, awareness, understanding, preliminary work is so helpful and then allows us to do our best in supporting those processes. So that for me is, is the really ideal model. Um, however, we do recognize that you know, sometimes it just hasn't been possible to get to that stage you know, uh, for agents or for students. Um, and equally, sometimes you know, um, they may simply come and ask for our advice and that's, that's fine too. So it, it's very much working um, with the agent as the driver, because in, in the end, the decision about the school must not be Bishop Stroh's. It must be the decision of the child and the parent. Um, and, and that's really extremely important on, on two levels. 
one of those is that um, from the um, student point of view, it is the student who is going on to that next school. It's their education. They've got to own it. They've got to feel comfortable with it. And it's got to be something that they know they're going to enjoy. So from that end, it's super important that they are the people who are, who are making that decision, getting lots of good advice, but you know, that's a decision that really belongs on, on that side of the house with the agent, parent, family, child. But it's also important for us as an institution. Uh, Bishop Stroh has an awful lot of students every year who are going on to boarding schools. Um, and we need to be seen to be independent by those boarding schools. If they think that we are you know, directing all the kids to you know, one particular school, then actually that doesn't do our reputation any good at all. Um, the schools need to understand that we're operating in an honorable, high integrity way, providing advice for our students, providing help for, for agents where they need it, and making sure that the advice we give um, is um, a very even-handed advice and trying to help um, students get the, the, you know, the right school that works, works for them. So that, that, that independence is really very important from the Bishop Stroke point of view. Um, Great, thank you very much, Stuart. And if anybody does, I don't know if anybody wants to unmute um, and ask any further questions around that subject area. Uh, okay, uh, if I may ask a question or maybe a suggestion, I uh, just uh, following. I was just following um, uh, the presentation. Uh, it is good that your school uh, is very uh, systematic uh, in uh, recommend. Sorry, name. I think we we lost you. students' uh, delicate issue. Can you hear me? Sorry, Ning. We lo we lost you at the at the start there. Could you repeat that? Yeah. Okay. I was just saying that uh, it is a delicate issue. Um, it's good that your school has a, a systematic approach uh, regarding the students' progression. However, in the past, I had a, a student who just told me out of the blue, oh, my teacher told me that you should apply to base or you, apply, you should apply to Woodbridge. It's like a, a very sudden. Um, then the parents started questioning me, oh, Mr. Chang, why you didn't recommend these two schools? Because his teacher said these schools are fantastic and, and, and it's really a good fit. So it creates a lot of reports and eventually it's, it's very troublesome to rectify that. So I, I would probably suggest uh, in your school's drive to help students to move on to the future schools, can you have maybe two different cohorts based on the uh, based whether the student has somebody to take care, to take care of them as the guardian or as the agents, or especially the agents, or uh, if they don't have any agents, uh, i.e., the di direct application to your school, because I think if they have an agent, instead of uh, uh, you uh, sitting on the driver's seat, I think you should rather change the gear and support the agents, uh, so that everybody is happy, because. Uh, the agents normally they have a very strong relationship with the family. The family rely on the agents for all kinds of things. Um, I mean, uh, simply put. So if if the uh, school sends a different signal, it will be very complicated. But uh, I think your approach is very suitable for students who are direct applicants to your school. So they don't have agents. The guardian says, as far as I know, they don't know much about the school progression. So I think your approach is perfect for the students without the agents. But for the students with an agent, I think you should probably maybe uh, um, let the agents to, uh, to, to be on the driver's seat and you just support the agent. That's just my idea up to your, I mean, discretion. Mark, I wonder if it would be really helpful. Would you be able to put back up um, the slide? I think it's page 10. Yeah, bear with me a minute, Stuart. Because I'm, Ling, I'm completely um, at one with you. I completely agree with what, with what you're saying. Um, if um, an, an agent comes with some um, you know, clear views about the future schools, absolutely. Just regard us as being alongside you. You know, we're there, we're there to help. We're not there to drive. 
Um, Was it? Um, the one with the circles. Sorry, the one with the circles. There we go. That's the one. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, at the very um, top there, up up in June, um, where um, students come with agents who are very knowledgeable, who've um, got um, you know, a clear view about the right sort of school for this child, then that is an absolutely brilliant starting point for us, for us to be told that, that's absolutely super. And then you can be telling us, you know, this is what we'd like you to do, Bishop Stroh, to help um, the student understand exactly what they have to do for these schools. Um, that for us is a, is a real flying start. So super if that's what you've got. Thank you very much. Another thing is um, uh, I just want to mention uh, probably a bit uh, separate is uh, you have a uh, lot of things going on from June to August. However, lots of students uh, going to IGTSC um, they can only start in September because uh, either they want to have a summer holiday in uh, you were, I mean, in their own country, or their year 10 or lower grade is not finished until June. So it's difficult for them to, to start right from your term four, because that's normally regarded as a summer holiday period uh, than uh, the start of the new year. So I was just uh, uh, thinking what kind of support you can get uh, if they can if they can only start in September, maybe a kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, tailored down. Uh, I mean, uh, it's kind of suppressed uh, uh, kind of uh, um, additional support because the key thing is, uh, I don't think, I don't think many students can make a June start. That's the thing. Um, I think what we've seen is that um... You know, it depends on particular circumstances. Many students can make a June start because we have a very busy term four. Um, you know, that's you know, often the school is you know, pretty much full throughout, uh, throughout term four. Um, and whether it's feasible depends, I think, really on the sort of support that they might be able to get elsewhere because the um, slide after this one, which indicated just how early the processes um, kick in, for these competitive schools. So if you look at the um, registration dates there, um, it's, it's in order to take account of what the next school is saying. It's Bishop Stowe responding to that really rather than anything else. But I appreciate that there might be some students who uh, are supported by you know, very knowledgeable people who can put in some of the things um, instead of us during um, June, July, August. So we know it's not impossible, but the reason why we structured this is because we just know how much work needs to be done really before the traditional school year starts. Thank you, Stuart. Um, and Ning, just to come back to that, yes, June is obviously um, ideal, is when we want the students, but if anybody does have students that can only sort of start in July, um, do get in touch and we will always consider them case by case as well. Okay. So thank you. Uh, moving on, um, we've got question regarding BNO visa holders, BNO families. What shall be the tuition fees, Mark? Good question. Um, and obviously, we are aware that um, there's growing uh, appetite, I think, from BNO passport holders um, in Hong Kong to relocate to the UK and to have their children attend school in the UK um, from a domestic base. Um, I think in, in that instance, we'd be happy to um, put in place a sort of special fee arrangement for BNO passport holders um, that are based in the UK, that are relocated to the UK. Um, obviously, Bishop Joe doesn't have any domestic students, uh, and so this is a sort of a, an unusual and somewhat exceptional situation. But we would certainly be happy to explore that further and to have a fee that was uh, adjusted from our normal fee, which is for international students only. Thank you, Mark. Um, we have a question from Tara, uh, and Tara says, have you had students who struggle with cultural and academic challenges, and how has Bishop Stroh supported them with these challenges? Um, I think it'd be, Chris is probably the chap to talk about targeted intervention. There's a super system of um, dealing with the um, academic support that students need, and um, if there's any 
you know further bits related to cultural perhaps come back to me for those uh, sure okay i'll i'll uh, respond with the academic side then um so when students come to us they are individuals uh, and we assess them um with the the kinds of exams that they're going to be taking at the end of the course and what we do we take the uh, results of those exams we break them down very carefully to identify the specific weaknesses that each student has and so when students come to us with particular gaps in their education uh, which is quite often the case because of the transition between two different kinds of curriculum um, then we can identify those gaps and we and we do have a system called targeted intervention uh, where we measure progress very, very carefully throughout the term. And any students who are not making the kind of progress that we are expecting them to make um, go into this program where teachers will be talking about them at least on a weekly basis. Um, we'll be putting in strategies uh, to help them. We'll be controlling the kind of prep that they're doing more closely uh, to focus on the gaps that they have in their education um, until they are making the kind of progress that we expect. And this is also supported by additional one-to-one -one lessons if that is um, necessary, and we'll contact the agent and the parent um, if that is the case. Uh, but most of the time we can focus on um, controlling what the student is doing in the classroom and in, in their prep uh, to make sure that they're able to focus on those gaps, focus on those weaknesses, and make the kind of progress um, that we expect our students to make in order to reach their targets at the end of the year. On the cultural um, front, the um, ability for students to um, learn, as it were, just how things work here is really important. And you got me thinking about a visit that I made very shortly after I was appointed as principal at Bishopstrow to go to one of the schools where I taught before, where some Bishopstrow students had just, just gone there. So they were in their first two or three weeks at their new school. And what they said to me was that Bishopstrow had been really incredibly helpful to them because the whole system was built around understanding international students and understanding what international students need. And they said that the whole system was there and it understood what it was they were likely to be struggling with. So it's a, it's a really easy place where uh, for, for students to find out how the whole system works. So we, we anticipate that students are likely to be confused about things because you know we've got students who are new to the UK every term. We anticipate that students will be you know struggling to find their way around, working out how things how things work here. So we help them all the time. And it was really interesting hearing it from that student perspective that they felt it was really important that Bishop Stroh was solely for international students because they said they know everything, every teacher, every member of staff is always thinking, what is it that we are gonna be finding difficult? And they're helping that with us almost before we know. Great, thank you. Thanks, Stuart. Um, Mark, one for you, please. Um, could you please give an overview of nationality and uh, our student population? How many Russian speaking students do we have? Do we have any Nigerian students? I've just taken everybody's questions and, and put it in as one. Thank you, Betty. Um, so I'm going to give some data based on pre-COVID because obviously um, things are very different and have been different for the last 12 months. But historically, Bishop Stroh has recruited students from up to 30 nationalities. It might be somewhere between 20 and 30 nationalities a term, depending on the specific academic year or time of year. Um, the markets that have historically been our main sources of students have been China, Russia, Japan and Thailand. And then a long um, tail of countries, um, including other Russian speaking countries, so Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and including um, uh, countries in West Africa, such as Nigeria, uh, but, but on a much smaller scale in the case of Nigeria. So a small number of students from Nigeria, typically with us for the summer, preparing for boarding school. Um, the number of Russians, uh, specifically, or Russian speaking students may peak, um, again, pre-COVID at around about 15%. And it's important to highlight that those students might be age seven, or they might be age 17, or they might be somewhere in between. So when it comes down to the makeup of nationalities in a class, most of our classes have a real good mix of uh, nationalities. 
And similarly, when it comes to um, who the students are sharing with in their boarding houses, they will always be sharing with students from other countries, other nationalities. So English is the common language. At the moment, because of COVID, um, <coughs> the, the breakdown in the numbers is somewhat sort of um, uh, different. Um, and hopefully as we come out of COVID, as we sort of progress through this year, we will we'll see a return to um, those patterns that I've just described. Great, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Um, we have a question around guardianship. Um, so all students that register at Bishop Show will need to have a guardian in place. Um, the college will not act as a guardian uh, on behalf of the students, so we do require a guardian, please. So that, that's for Ruth, who asked whether Bishop Stroh um, offers guardianship. So the next question from Tatiana uh, is, can I please ask, will you be offering an opportunity to stay for three weeks only, or will there be only the option, standard option for the summer? So will we offer three weeks or do students have to book the full five week or 10 week mark? Good question, Tatiana, and thank you for joining us. Um, Obviously, our preference for students enrolling on the one-year IGCSE programme, as we have outlined, is for them to enrol for Term 4, um, or um, as an alternative, the second academic summer programme ahead of the year, so that's uh, five weeks. Um, we are obviously, uh, as, a, as a school, still uh, uncertain about the outlook um, because of COVID, as I think we all are. And at this stage, looking ahead to the summer, it's not clear precisely um, the extent to which students will be back on campus or studying online. Um, and also, therefore, um, the extent to which there is demand for the 10 week program or the five week program. I think um, sitting here today, our preference is that we go back to the normal enrollment uh, period to so 10 weeks and five weeks. But I think it would also be sensible to say that we will continue to be as flexible as possible. And certainly if we've got students um, enrolling online where we've had them enroll for three weeks, I would imagine we will continue to do that subject to availability of um, spaces. Great, thank you. Uh, Stephen has asked about deadlines for applications um, and I assume they're deadlines for Bishop Show applications. Um, as of today, um, we are taking rolling admission. So we are, we are taking students applications for term uh, term three at the moment, term four for term one as well. Um, if we go back to the admissions process, um, so the admissions process could last 24 hours, it could last 48 hours, it could last a week, it just depends on the documentation we have. Um, we will always try to get interviews up and running in the same week that we receive the application for the one year IGCSE. We will obviously need to, some more time given the student does need to be tested and on some occasions the student might need to have a subject interview as well. So this could take slightly longer, um, but in general it's, it's quite a smooth um, admissions process and we are continuing to take applications um, every day uh, un until, until we are full. So keep them coming <laughs> if you do have, have any applications. So um, Ning has asked, can a student do half of term four if they cannot do the whole term? I think the answer is um, Ning, uh, as we discussed, and obviously as you highlighted, it's difficult for all students to potentially enroll in June for various reasons. That is our, clearly our starting point. That's our preference given the headlines for um, the admissions process at the destination school. But if someone was able to join um, in July, which is the midpoint of term four and start with us uh, then and do the five weeks of the academic summer program before rolling into term one and the full year, um, I think that is um, something that we'd be happy to consider. Uh, we would caveat that obviously in terms of expectations on destination schools based on the specific student's profile and ability, um, but we would be happy to consider that. Great, thank you, Mark. And Ruth asks, what is the payment plan in terms of uh, tuition? So if your student has been offered a place, they will um, be issued an offer letter. We would require a reg fee and deposit um, plus term, the terms fee um, in advance as well. And then we can uh, proceed with the visa. So it's a termly payment uh, option. Um, 
Ezi asks, for international students who don't feel safe to resume by March, can they continue the online class? That's the, the, the <laughs> I, I want to see who answers that question, Stuart or, or Mark. Uh, well, I think the Great. answer is easy, uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, they can. Um, the, the online classes are going really well, um, but um, we recognize that not everybody is either um, comfortable or able indeed to be able to um, return to um, do things face to face. So we're going to maintain that online provision in the same way. And, and actually, that just feeds into Ning's question. Um, Ning, who says that uh, he's got a student at the moment who is studying with us, um, and would we encourage um, the student to come and do the summer term. And I think we would all agree, yes. We definitely yeah, so do encourage students to come back on face-to-face -face learning as soon as possible. It's quite interesting, those, those two options. We've, we've had um, so many instances of students who have said how much they appreciate the online lessons. Mm -hmm. you know, students who've, who've not been able to go to school, when they've you know, discovered the, the Bishop's Row online provision, you know, say, you know, are you enjoying your lessons? Oh my goodness, yes, this is so much better than you know, you know, being on my own and uh, you know, having nothing to do. Um, but then when they eventually managed to arrive uh, on site, I actually think a you know, lovely chap, Yusuf, uh, a current example. I'd ask him, you know, how are the online lessons going? He'd be raving about them. And then he came in person and he was raving even more. Yeah. <laughs> so the answer there is, if you do have students currently studying online, please do encourage them to come, come onto campus as soon as possible. Um, Anne? I wonder if you if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to say anything or ask any questions. Um, I I just want to make some comments for people who perhaps haven't been to the UK and are agents abroad. Um, I've had over forty five years in education, uh, international students, and um, what is really really important is that the students are at the right level. Bishop Stroh, when they when they started in two thousand and six. I was head of international support at a boarding school and everything they are trying to achieve is what is needed from a professional point of view, from a pastoral point of view. And I, I've made a couple of comments. One um, about the fact that um, agents don't necessarily know all the schools that there are in the UK. Since I've been out of uh, education, I am finding schools that I didn't know that would be ideal for students. And the most important thing is that the student goes to the right school and parents will recognize that as well. So what Bishop Stroh is doing is really, really important. So for agents, you will have schools that you've got in line, but surely your, your, um, your relationship with the parents is to make sure that you do the right by their child. So working with Bishop Stroh is so important to find that right school. And it could be that you don't even know of it. I know from years and years of experience that most parents go for the top name schools. And actually a lot of schools that they don't know about will get students into Oxford and Cambridge. And, and that's really important. The other, er the, the other two areas that I wanted to mention, first of all, this being prepared for interviews and things in October is so important. So trying to get students um, there in June is, is really crucial. A lot of students, it takes them a while to get settled in and really knowing what that student is capable of doing. And I've been on the end of, of accepting students at schools and sort of saying, I can see the potential. I know they've only just arrived, but if they've got that confidence, it really, really is important. And the final thing for the IGCSE, I know somebody said, surely um, uh, 5.5 is B, B1. Uh, it's not, um, it's B2. And actually for textbooks and for everything that students need to know, they have to be at that B2 level. If they are not there, they really can't access the, the academic books that they're using. They don't have the language and they, they really need to have that support. And everything that Bishop Stroh has done from students that I've had with them and students that I've, I've uh, recommended, um, I'm 100 percent behind what they do. And um, I wasn't going to come to this today, but I'm glad that I did because I've had some some more thoughts um, really the student is the most important and the students who go to Bishop Stroh are happy, they're prepared and that's why they get to the top 
um, schools and then from those top schools to the top universities. So that's all I wanted to say really. <laughs> Thank you so much Anne, really appreciate it. It's good to get your, your insight as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple more questions, Betty, have come through from yep. Ivan. So from Ivan, so the one-year IGCSE is a very intensive course, and my experience with most of the other boarding schools offering the course um, are not able to do more than five subjects for a one-year IGCSE. Excluding English, what are the subjects six to eight that the students mainly take from Bishop Stroke? Chris? Chris, you're on mute. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there's always the one. Ah, it's me. Um, I think if we let Alenka actually answer um, the question below that is, uh, what subjects did she do? Um, and then we can link that into the subjects that we have now. Um, so if I, if we, if we, if Alenka is still here, I can't see her on my screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Hi, Alenka. Uh, do you want to tell us what uh, subjects that you did while you were here? Yeah, of course. So that's excluding English. Um, so because I come from Ukraine, I can also speak Russian. So I did um, Russian. Um, I did English as a second language, I did math, I did statistics, um, I did the double award science, did business studies, history, but I also did geography on the side of that. Um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, Alenka, I mean, you were, um, you, so you did a whole range of subjects there, but we understand that um, uh, this is, it is an intensive course. It is, it's a two or sometimes a three year course that we have um, adapted um, in order to get all of the content and all of the skills in uh, to just a few terms um, and with international students as well. We recognize that and that's how we have adapted the course um, to make sure that students like Alenka can make the most of it and do a whole range of different subjects. Um, now we've slightly changed the setup from when Alenka was uh, with Bishop Stroke College because of our understanding that um, some students might not be able to access all of those things. Uh, and so you can see that we have um, kind of two different streams almost. Um, so the more able students will focus on um, English as a first language. If they come in with a very strong level of English, uh, we can cater for that. Um, and again, the more um, able mathematicians can take additional mathematics on top of um, the mathematics GCSE as it's designed by the Cambridge um, exam board to do. Um, and so um, these are the subjects that we think uh, that we know that we've seen students um, able to take and the way that we teach them, way that we support using our global perspectives modules and the subject support modules and also the English modules as well. Um, they're all there designed to help those students access those courses when they first arrive and make the most of them um, by understanding the content, understanding and practicing and developing the skills needed to take the exams and be successful in taking them at the end of the course. And so um, that's why we're saying it with um, students when they're arriving, they're arriving at B2 level, uh, we're going to use the password test to um, uh, assess those students when they're arriving. And um, so we know they can start, if they start in June, that'll be fantastic because they can hit the ground running and they'll be able to complete all of these subjects. And we, we think as a minimum, they'll be able to do the English, the maths, the double awards, science, business, and the history as well. Um, and then it's the first language and additional mathematics for those higher level students that we would like to stretch and get them what they can get um, at IGCSE level. Yeah, and we're not pretending that this is a course for every 15, 16 year old. This is why we're fairly uh, rigorous about um, what we're asking for. Exactly. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Alenka. Thank you, Stuart. Um, do we have any other questions? Does anybody want to unmute? No, any questions for Alenka? Before she goes back to her, her studies? No? Okay. Over to you, Mark. Thank you, Betty. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, hopefully, it's been an informative uh, session. It's taken a bit longer than we thought, but um, really good uh, Q&A session there. Um, Alenka, many thanks for joining us and um, thank you. from your studies. Uh, really great to have your um, input, and thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, appreciate your uh, input uh, and obviously your continuing support for Bishop Stroh. Um, 
I think that's all. As, I, as we mentioned up front, we will share the presentation and the recording of the webinar um, later on. And of course, if you've got any questions um, subsequent to uh, this morning's session, please do get in touch. And hopefully you will have um, some students that are interested in this program uh, as they look ahead to their sixth form entry for September 2022. But thank you very much um, again and Good day, good afternoon, good evening, um, and enjoy the weekend. But thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Thank bye. you, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.